Furious Driving, presented by Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, with more cars added every week. And Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining, and you can protect, clean and care for your car with 10% off site-wide using code FD10. Now, like Diamond Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all areas of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving, and today we're heading back to do a little bit of work on Verrill the Beetle, the little 2005 1.9 PD Volkswagen New Beetle, which we swapped the Moldeo for a few weeks ago. Actually, longer ago than I'd hoped to in terms of getting things done in this car, but I had a crazy busy time of work. So, normally I try and split my weeks, so I'll do a few days of YouTube, a couple of days of actual work, and then things balance out quite well. However, last week wound up being nothing but work, and so. Poor old Beryl and everything else in the fleet basically got ignored, including Crown Vic, which was meant to be being prepared for an MOT. It turns out I needed to do a couple of jobs to it, which means it won't pass the MOT, so it's going to sit there with no MOT until some bits turn up from Rock Auto, which is very annoying. But anyway, let's put, the, put my tea down in a second. Right, so Beryl has got a few jobs that need to be done to make this thing smarten up enough to move it onto a new home, because I'm quite enjoying Beryl, but the point of this whole feature, this story, whatever you want to call it, is to improve and flip on and uh, nothing particularly major but there's a number of things that we need to sort out to significantly improve the prettiness of this car and make it just look a little bit more attractive and polish some money into it incidentally i have added one of the furious driving um us license plate keyrings to its keyring this is the new mexico one in honor of the fact that the old shape beetle was built in mexico until 2003 it seemed kind of appropriate to do that right now first of all there's a very easy fix to this car which will make it look a thousand times better with a click of a finger right right so first of all with a snip of the uh, trim clips these things can go i was going to do something hilarious and sacrificial like clay pigeon shooting or running them over but a viewer has actually asked for them so i'll put them somewhere safe and pass them on coming your way very soon my friend now i had wondered why someone was so protective of these truly awful hubcaps as to cable tie them all on turns out though that without the uh, cable ties these basically just fall off so that's some real quality there it may not look smart and amazing, but I think it's about a thousand times better and it's probably added about 200 quid on the car's value by not having those hubcaps on there. So <laughs> we'll sort out something more permanent in one of the upcoming videos. Meanwhile though, we have got another hopefully fairly cheap and easy fix. Right, so this came with the car. Apparently this pipe is split and leaking air and you don't really notice it in everyday driving, but it does chuff a bit of black smoke every now and then under load and this will apparently fix that. So I think, you unclip these clips here. We need two hands for this. So yes, camera now mounted. I think you pop these clips out and then this thing just slides out as far as I'm aware. Oh, that's probably more out than I wanted it to be. Hmm, okay. Blech. Dieselly and dirty. Dirty diesel, as they say. With, well, I guess good reason. So this should slot into this hole down here, unless I've got the wrong one, in which case I need to go digging somewhere else for this. Oh, hang on. No, this is different. This is a different pipe. So where does that one buried? Am I gonna have to go and enlist the help of a garage for this? Because I don't know where that other pipe is. That is quite a significantly uh, smaller pipe. Hmm, okay. Let's pop this back in again in that case. All right, that pipe is now refitted. So the question is, where, pray tell, is the other one? Hmm. I did wonder why such an easy fix hadn't been done by the previous owner, because it's sort of sitting there right in front of you. 30 seconds of work, as I've just demonstrated by putting the old back in. Instantly, someone did say it was much easier if you half fit these wire cables clips before you reinsert it. And they were absolutely right. That made it an absolute doddle. So where on earth is that other pipe? Is this an underneath the car job? Is this why it's not been done? Okay, after as much exploration as standing on the drive with a torch can muster, either this is very buried very deeply in the engine or my friend was supplied with the wrong pipe. So uh, yeah, might have to go and ask a Volkswagen specialist what the case is. There, you'd never know I've been in there, apart from the fact nothing's fixed. 
Right, I've just checked the receipt for this because uh, I didn't notice this in the packaging, but this has come all the way from Germany. I won't show you the addresses and things, but this is correct item apparently. Original Volkswagen uh, pressure hut. Pressure hose, turbo hose, Beetle 1.9 TDI. £75. Blimey. Wow, that's uh, hopefully the right thing. I'm going to have to investigate where this might go a bit further in that case then. Right, the next thing to file under super easy, barely an inconvenience upgrades on this car are these wiper blades. They're absolutely fine. They were part of the MOT and they do clear the screen, but they are very smeary indeed. And that's very annoying. So I have... Whoa, that comes out quite easily. I wasn't even trying to do it. <laughs> that was... Uh, don't get the buzzer off games. Um, yeah, 11 99 each from Halford, so £24 worth of wiper blades just there. I'll get them fitted and suddenly the car will be an awful lot like new. Well, kind of ish. The number of these things I've done, oh, you'd think I'll be like an old pro at them by now. There we go, I think. Yeah, there we go. Done. That one actually went on quite easily. Hurrah. Okay, that one comes off a little, yeah, quite easily. I had to do away in a scrap metal uh, beginning of the week actually, or end of last week. Got £24 worth of stuff for a bonnet and some car window frames and various other odds and ends. Which, if you think about it, actually uh, paid for these new wipers. Well, I've got a curve on them, I never noticed that. Right, let's give this a quick warp. Oh, I'm, out, I'm out of washer juice, I've forgotten that. I can't demonstrate my triangle of doom because I'm out of squeegee juice. Which is the next thing I need to do, which I'd forgotten about. Right, second time lucky here. There we go. Virtually no triangle of doom on the driver and the centre side, but quite a large corner of disappointment over with the passenger. Otherwise, pretty good. Now next up for the chop are these truly awful 3D printed number plates, which I've not been a fan of since the moment I saw the car. Now, fortunately, I have just got this in from the Draper Spring Collection. Um, this is um, the 65 piece Impact uh, screw bit driver bit set so you can actually whack some oomph through these things. So I'll put some bulldog on there because these screws are always rusted in place, they're right catching the salt. So I can stick the drill onto full hammer mode and buzz these things out hopefully and say goodbye. Well, I came out bizarrely easily. A bit too easily, you might say. Okay, this is something that will doubtlessly divide opinion, but the style I've gone for is actually the bubble 3D plates, like we stuck on Quint in the 206 convertible we did. The last year, no, the year before, I'm losing track of time when we did stuff. Uh, yeah, 2021, I think we did Quentin now. Crikey, time is flying. But because of the bubbly shape of the, of the Beetle, I think this is kind of a little finishing touch that will make this thing look so, so good, because that, just fits the character and the smile of the car. Um, I've just given this a really good clean up with some brake and clutch cleaner to get all the grime off and the grease off. Um, I'm just waiting for some sticky pads to arrive in the post any second now, and then we can bung these on the front and that'll be an absolute brilliant transformation. Uh, on the back, it's actually pretty grimy, so I'm um, using some lift off to get this dirt off. Uh, this is traffic form remover, basically. So I can then get this grime back nice clean surface to uh, stick the new number plates onto. Now the wiper blades also look a bit, well, tired frankly, and you might be thinking I need to go and repaint them, but no, I'm going to pull out the big guns. This is Dumb and Bright Replenish, which is a well, black trim cleaner and renovator, which should give us quite a difference in terms of the black finish on this and make it look as good as new without having to resort to repainting it. Also does the plastic trim underneath. I'm using it in a different dispenser bottle. This is the kind of little background detail that makes such a difference to a car. So when it's all polished up and looking nice, it'll make the car just look significantly better. So I don't know if you can see that on the, the two equivalents. That's the after with the, the black blacked. And this is the before with the black still white. There you go, that's such a basic thing, but the black plastic trim under the windscreen, blacked off windscreen wipers, just make the car look so much smarter. And it's basically a zero cost, minimal effort. Normally that'd be one of the last things to do to the car, but since I'm doing the wipers anyway, might as well get in there now and do it.
Well, that kind of escalated a little bit. Um, typically, getting carried away and doing irrelevant stuff after I did the wipers and the scuttle on that one, and then I did the wipers and the scuttle on the Crown Vic, and then I did all the trim on the Crown Vic, and then spent quite a long time doing the entire egg crate grill because it looks lovely when you've done it, but it takes forever and really makes your fingers sore. Then I went back and did all the trim on this car, apart from the middle bit of this because the stickers need to stick to it. So this now looks lovely and shiny, even though it needs washing. <laughs> I've just wasted about half an hour just trim detailing stuff on cars that need washing, just because, because I don't know why, just because. So now the next thing to do is this. I've never used this before, but, but it has been recommended to me by friends and I've stuck a link to it down on Amazon. Um, so if you want to have a look at it down below, these headlights are pretty cloudy. They're not scratched, not broken, but they are cloudy as anything. And I've just noticed they've got blue side lights in there, which is kind of fun. So what I need to do is follow the instructions on this. I've never done it before. It looks pretty easy. So this box contains some gloves, which is good. Headlight clear, headlight cleaner, and some cloths, which seems like a pretty simple process. So it says to oops, wet the cloth with the cleaner, that seems to make sense, and then clean the headlight. And they're both quite badly discoloured, so we'll see what comes off. Ugh, a lot of yellowy brown stuff. I can actually feel how sort of rough gritty the surface is. It did say to ensure the headlight was cool and I've not used these lights in a few days so they should be pretty cool. I don't know how much yellowing will come out of this because I think it might be quite deeply ingrained in the plastic. If this is amazing, I'll kind of try it on the um, 200VI because that's got very yellow headlights as well. On well, the driver's side, I would say it's quite a bit worse than the passenger, so we'll see if this one comes out a lot less cloudy as well. Well, so that's quite a lot of grime coming out of that. After significant scrubbing on the passenger side, we've got it looking well like that, which is quite a lot crisper actually. Also did the indicator on the passenger side as well, which I don't know, didn't really come out that much clearer, but certainly had a bit less frosting, I would put it that way. Okay, these were just very, very cloudy, but they look an awful lot better now. However, coming over to the Rover, and you will not believe this transformation. This is how the Rover 200 VI's headlights did look. This is very yellow, horrible, nasty. And this is after the cleaning process. This is a second stage to go on in a minute, but look at the difference. That is night and day. Not bad for like a 12 pounds off Amazon kit. And that is a lot of dirt taken out of that lens. And the next stage apparently is to wipe the stage two bottle in single straight lines, try not to overlap them, and then leave it to dry. Whoops, I missed a bit. Apparently if you go wrong, you just get the cleaner, clean it all off and start over again, which sounds pretty easy. Right, okay, so daylight has happened and we have completely changed the front end of this car. Significant improvements. The headlights are now a lot shinier, brighter and clearer. They're not perfect, but you know, there's only so far you can recover old plastic to. The number plates really do suit the front of the bug. The FD Furious driving plates now in bubble form thanks to perfectly printed plates. And one of my viewers did actually offer to make some plates up for me. They are a number plate making person. Unfortunately, I'd already put these in motion through uh, the other guys, but that looks really, really good. Also, looking at the Rover, which did the same headlight treatment too, really, really good, massive improvement. Again, it's just really freshened the front of the car up. It's such as a small thing, it's like polishing your shoes. It changes the car completely. So that's really, really good. Okay, it's not massive changes to the car. And I have to say, I have now seen one of these engine bays in pieces, and I now know where the other one of those um, turbo pipes goes, and it basically lives down here, just the other side of this plastic wheel well liner, underneath the engine, above the steering racks. So it's kind of not too hard if you've got the car on a lift, but trying to do it on a jack is pretty difficult, which I guess is why it hadn't been done. If you've seen 
the video that came out today of driving up to Coventry to have Hippo painted by Pop Band Colour, then you will know that I've been on a parts collecting haul and I've got a bunch of new parts for Beryl the Beetle, which are all quite exciting and or big improvements to make massively update the car. So tune in the next time we're gonna start making some big, big differences to this car and seriously improving the inside and the outside. Right now we've done, done the finishing touches first, which is kind of the wrong way around to do things, but it just makes the car a lot nicer to use, more pleasant to be in and yeah, just more enjoyable. If you don't feel great about driving a car, you won't drive it and if you, you won't bother fixing it really as best you can either. But, but the things we've done on the car today, although fairly minor, have made a bit of an impact to it. So it's more usable, it's nicer and there's lots more to come. So don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell notification for all that stuff, all the good stuff as they should say. And uh, yeah, we'll see some big changes coming on Barrel the Beetle in the next couple of videos. Goodbye.